Plot summary of the best we could do by T. Bui. T. Bui traces her parents lives in Vietnam and the United States in her graphic memoir The Best We Could Do. She does this to help her figure out who she is and understand the gray stillness that has always been there in her family. Bui's book starts with three different prefaces, a short written explanation of how she started the project that became the best we could do in graduate school and finished it after more than a decade of trial and error, a comic strip preface that shows her meeting one of her heroes, the Vietnamese-American writer Viet Thanh Nguyen, and an illustrated timeline of Vietnamese history, focusing on the period of war from 1945 to 1975, which roughly coincides with the period dubbed the American. The first part of Bowie's story starts in 2005, when she gives birth in New York City. Travis, her husband, is with her, but her ma, which is Vietnamese for mom, is hiding outside the waiting room. She doesn't want to see her daughter in pain or think about when she gave birth. After reluctantly agreeing to get anesthesia, Bowie gives birth to a baby with a faraway face and old man eyes. She draws the baby coming out of a cloud of smoke. She spends the night with her son, but she isn't very happy about it. The next morning, Ma brings Bowie P.H. to her house and tells her that her father, whom she calls B, was not there for the births of most of her six children. Bui thinks about how family is now something, she, made instead of just something, she, was born into. In Chapter 2, Bui jumps ahead to 2015 in California, where she, Travis, and her son live with Ma, right next door to B. She still remembers the big fight that broke out when she, along with her older sisters Lon and BCH, decided to move in with her boyfriend instead of staying with their parents. Now that she is both a parent and a child, her conflicts with her family are more internal. She doesn't know whether to hold herself to the Vietnamese expectation that she give up her career to care for her parents or to the American expectation that she let them live alone and on their own for as long as possible. Even her parents, who were always reluctant to talk about the past and their families in Vietnam, were never close to her. Bui introduces each of her siblings and talks about where they were born. All but her younger brother Tam were born in Vietnam, but Tam was born in a refugee camp in Malaysia. In Chapter 3, Bui thinks back to her childhood, when she and her family had trouble adapting to American culture. B won't work for minimum wage, so he stays home while Ma goes to work. He doesn't do much for the kids besides scare them. He mostly spends his days chain-smoking and looking for mysterious threats to the family, like that pervert across the street who he says is watching T. Young T thinks she needs to be brave to keep her family safe from these dangers. In Chapter 4, Bowie tries to figure out why B became so quiet and suspicious. She tells about his childhood again to find his wounds under wounds. His grandfather and father lived in a village near the northern Vietnamese city of Hai Phng in the early 20th century. This is the earliest thing we know about his family. His grandfather marries the daughter of the village chief, and his father marries a regular village girl. But after B was born, his mother, father, and grandfather stole his grandmother's valuable opium jars and moved to Hai Phng during World War II. There is a famine right now, so the family is lucky if they can find anything to eat other than small amounts of rice and stewed vegetables. To add insult to injury, B's abusive father throws his mother out, leaving her to die in the famine, and then disappears to join the Viet Minh revolutionaries. B is left alone with his grandfather, who brings him back to the village and to his forgiving grandmother. But soon, French troops come and kill everyone in the village. Seven-year-old B sees this while hiding in an underground shelter. The Viet Minh then launch a counterattack, so the chief's family, including B and his grandparents, must leave as soon as possible. Bui realizes why her father was so traumatized when she was growing up. She grew up with the terrified boy who became her father, and her childhood fear was only the long shadow of his own. In her fifth chapter, Bui talks about Maya's childhood, which was better than B's. Maya's father is a well-known engineer who worked for the French colonial government. Because of this, Ma grew up in Cambodia and Na Trang in comfort. Her mother is far away, and she spends most of her time reading. In fact, 
Her academic promise leads her to a series of French colonial schools, where she learns two important lessons. First, she realizes that her people are being hurt by colonialism and that the Vietnamese need to be free. And second, she learns that, as Bowie says, marriage equals trap but education equals freedom. Bowie doesn't understand how her parents ever got together. The Sai GN Teachers College is the right answer. When B's grandparents open successful shops in high PHNG, he goes to a French school. When that school closes, he has to move to Sai GN. After Vietnam is split in two, his father gets in touch with him again and tries to get him to stay in Ha Nai. But B won't go. The poverty he sees in the North makes him sick and he wants to stay with his grandfather, who raised him. As Bui explains in Chapter 6, B goes to Sai Gien, where his grandparents live in the dense working-class neighborhood of Ban Si. He then joins the teacher's college to avoid the military draft ordered by no NH Dim's government. Ma goes to the same college because it gives her the chance to be on her own and get a job. But Ma gets pregnant quickly, so she marries B even though her family doesn't like that he comes from a working-class family. And that's not all, B also has a severe form of tuberculosis that is very likely to kill her. Decades later, Ma finally tells T that she always wanted to make his last years happy. And then be free as a widow. But B gets better, and Ma soon gives birth to their first child, Gwyn. Gwyn dies as a baby, but no one knows why. Ma and B are very sad, so they go to the Mekong Delta to try to get better. But at the same time, the Americans invade South Vietnam, which destroys the economy and makes Ma and B's wages worthless. They move back to Sai Gien, but the government puts pressure on them during the next 10 years of war. They have Lon, BCH, and T, who is born three months before Liberation Day. In Chapter 7, T. Bui talks about how her parents' lives got even worse after the Vietnam War ended. Even though Liberation Day was pretty calm, B is soon fired from his job as a teacher because the new northern government thinks he is ingy or dishonest. The family finds out that government spies are watching them, and because of economic shocks, they lose all their money. After Ma's brother Hai goes missing, the rest of the family realizes they need to run away. They start making plans with Hai's wife, Q. When Hai gets out of jail by some miracle, it's time for the family to try to get away, even though Ma is eight months pregnant. They get on a boat at night and hide below deck while Mr. Chow, the boat's pilot, takes them to international waters. But the boat hits an island and draws the attention of police who are passing by. The adults hide the kids and give them Valium to keep them quiet while Mr. Chow works for hours to get the boat off the island. The police leave, and when the tide comes in, the boat breaks away from the shore. Mr. Chow gets back on the boat, but he is too shaken up to be able to drive it. So B takes over and leads everyone out to sea. That night, they have a party. A few days later, they reach the coast of Malaysia, where locals take them to the Palo Basar refugee camp. The eighth chapter of T. Bui starts in a refugee camp in Malaysia, where Ma is about to have her baby. She goes to the hospital, but she is adamant about going back to the camp, where Tam was born, to take care of her children. Ma and B talk about where and how to apply for asylum, and they decide to go to the United States to live with Ma's sister Ao. When they get there, it's hard for the girls to adapt to the American way of life and get along with Ao's family, who has been living in the US for three years. The cold winters in Indiana are the last straw, so Ma and B decide to move to sunny California with Hai. In Chapter 9, the Bowie family moves to California and starts to build a life there. Ma gets a job in a factory building circuits for $3.35 an hour, and the kids get used to going to school. Lon and BCH do too well in school, but they still come home from college often to watch T and Tam. One day, there's an explosion downstairs, and the family instinctively hides. But T realizes that staying inside is riskier than going outside, so she convinces the others to leave. She thinks that this is proof that she got a refugee reflex from her parents. The tenth and last chapter of T Bui's book picks up in the New York hospital where she gives birth 
where the first chapter left off. She thinks about the lessons she's learned from talking to her parents and how she might use them as a parent herself. In fact, just like her ma and B when they tried to escape, Bui is asked to be heroic during her son's first week of life. He gets jaundice and has to stay in the hospital, while she has to go see him every 90 minutes to breastfeed him. T remembers her mother's voice as she talks to him in Vietnamese. She says she never thought of her mother as the independent, self-determining, and free woman she was before she married B, and maybe would have stayed that way if she hadn't made that fateful choice. Bui knows that she has given up some of her freedom for the sake of her son, but she hopes that he will have a new life that isn't defined by war and loss but by the chance to be free. About the author T. Bui was born in Sai Gien, South Vietnam, in early 1975, just before the end of the Vietnam War, as she writes in The Best We Could Do. Three years later, she and her family left Vietnam by boat for Malaysia and then the United States, where she grew up in California. She then went to UC Berkeley to study art and law as an undergraduate. After that, she learned how to be a sculptor in New York and got an MFA from Bard College. Even though she started showing her art around the city, she soon changed her mind and decided to become a teacher in a public school. She was studying art education at New York University when she started talking to her family about Vietnam for a final project. She decided that comics would be the best way to tell their story. She started to learn how to draw them and wrote the best we could do over the course of more than a decade as she slowly went through her family's history. She taught art in a high school in New York and then in an alternative school for new immigrants in Oakland, California. She taught her students how to write their own stories in the form of graphic novels, and after a few years, she put them all together in a book called We Are Oakland International. During this time, she also showed her art in galleries and put her academic writing in magazines and journals. She has taught comics to graduate students at the California College of the Arts since 2015. But she has only become a well-known name in the world of comic books since 2017, when she published The Best We Could Do to Great Reviews. Her book won an American Book Award, was a finalist for the National Book Critics Circle Award in Autobiography and the Eisner Award, which is the most important award for comic books, and is required reading for first-year students in at least a dozen colleges and universities across the United States. In 2018, Bui helped her friend, the well-known Vietnamese-American novelist Viet Thanh Nguyen, put together an anthology called The Displaced, Refugee Writers on Refugee Lives. She also illustrated the children's book A Different Pond by the Vietnamese-American poet Bao Phi. In 2019, she and her son Hin worked with Nguyen and Nguyen's son Ellison to make a new children's book called Chicken of the Sea. They did this as if they wanted to combine these two projects. Many of her political comics have also been posted on the website The Nib. She has said that the best we could do is the only memoir she will ever write, and she is now putting her energy into doing journalism through comic books. In her next project, she wants to show what farmers in the Mekong Delta in the south of Vietnam can expect from climate change. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.